What is the pure lip? We turn to the prophecy of Zephaniah, Zephaniah, to help us understand what is happening today through the Ruach HaKodesh, the Spirit, as we can see more and more people seeking the pure lip, the ancient Hebrew Aramaic language. Zephaniah's prophecy was given just prior to the siege of Jerusalem by the Babylonians, so it was fulfilled in part at that time as the Jews were taken into captivity and the temple and city of Jerusalem were completely destroyed. Yahweh also inspired Zephaniah to describe a day of more widespread destruction, which he named the Great Day of Yahweh. That's in Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 14. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 1 through 3, the apostle Shaul, Paul, identifies this day of Yahweh as being ushered in by the return of Yeshua HaMashiach. So we know that Zephaniah's prophecy has to do with events related to our time today, as well as with the Jewish nation in Zephaniah's own day. I believe that his prophecy of a clean lip, a pure language, is now being fulfilled right before our eyes as more and more people are returning to Lashon HaKodesh Kadam, the pure, dedicated language, back to the beginning, the original language as shown in Genesis in Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, we read, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. When it says one language and one speech, that means none other than ikad, ikad language and ikad speech. This was the pure language spoken before Yahweh divided all languages at the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11. There were 70 grandsons of Noah, that scholars report became 70 clans, each given a new language, and each clan, unable to understand the languages of the other clans, migrated to different lands. Yahweh had instructed Noah and his family to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, but they all stayed together, and they didn't spread out, so Yahweh dispersed them by dividing their languages. Let's turn to Zephaniah chapter 3. That's Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9. For then I shall turn unto the peoples a clean lip, a pure language, Sophal in Hebrew, so that they all call on the name of Yahweh to serve him with one shoulder. Let me pause here at verse 9 for just a moment. Can you see how that today the Father is turning us to a clean lip, a pure language, going back to the beginning, going back to the Sophal, so that we can call upon his name, Yahweh, and serve him with one shoulder, because we are yoked with Yahweh. Thereby, we are yoked with each other, and we're all moving at a force in the same places. Continue reading with uh, verse 10. From beyond the rivers of Cush, my worshipers, the daughter of my dispersed ones, shall bring my offering. And that day, you shall not be put to shame for any of your deeds in which you have transgressed against me. For then I shall remove from your midst your proud exulting ones, and you shall no more be haughty in my Kodesh set-apart mountain. But I shall leave in your midst an oppressed and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of Yahuwah. The remnant of Yisrael shall do no unrighteousness and speak no falsehood, nor is a tongue language of deceit found in their mouth, for they shall feed their flocks and lie down with none to frighten them. My friends, my brothers and my sisters, what am I saying here? Shall we all abandon English and start speaking ancient Hebrew? <laughs> no, no, not at all. That's not what I'm saying. We should, however, focus on our studies, on removing the pagan influence from our language and from our lives. Let's seek the freedom that Yahweh is showing us in these last days so that we will bring esteem to his Kodesh name and witness the Meltah, the revelation Yahweh is giving his children in these last days. Any questions you have regarding these studies I've been placing on this channel, just leave them in the comments section below this video. I will answer them as time permits and as best as I can through prayer. I hope and pray that this teaching has been a better God to you and yours. Shalom, Hallelujah.